Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to everyone who is on stream with us right now. Uh, first, uh, let's make sure everything is technically sound. There should be a chat box to your right side. Uh, please tell me if you can hear me. Just type in something. I can hear you well. That's great. Okay, I think we're ready. Um, so it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Arthur Aslanian, who will uh, give us the introduction to PetroCup. Um, this is a subject that we should all be deeply interested in because it offers one of a kind practical training for senior and young petroleum specialists. Uh, our speaker, Dr. Arthur, graduated from Kazan State University in 1993 with a PhD degree in theory of relativity and gravitation. He continued his academic career by lecturing mathematical disciplines at the same university, and two years later, founded TGT Oil and Gas Services and led the company as a chief executive officer until 2015, playing a pivotal role in the development of the company product line and its establishment across the world. He left the management position in 2015 and continued his support at director board's level. In the meantime, uh, he established a new company, Nafta College, with the Petro Cup as a flagship product, which he'll present to us today. Dr. Arthur has made substantial contribution to Petroleum Society, having published several dozens of CSPE papers and has participated in numerous patents. So on this note, I would like to welcome our speaker. Uh, good day to you, Dr. Arthur. How are you doing today? Absolutely fine. Thank you very much. It's a very sunny day today. It's good. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Um, now, uh, before we begin, I would like to give you some insights on how the webinar will run today. So the entire stream is recorded and will be saved on our channel where you can rewatch it again. Um, throughout the webinar, please feel free to leave your questions in the chat box. And after the presentation is over, I will read out all the questions from the chat to Dr. Arthur, who will be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, bear in mind that we have around 15 minutes allocated to Q&A sessions. So in case your question was not answered, uh, it will always be discussed later at NAFTA College Forum. So um, that's it. I believe we are ready to start our webinar. So Dr. Arthur, a word to you. Today, I would like to present only one product, specific product from NAFTA College, which is called PetroCup. It's a uh, typical immersive learning facility. It's a software. And uh, uh, it targets not to develop the geological skill or the skills of petrophysicist or the skills of uh, simulation engineer or well test analyst. It targets to to develop the holistic skill of the whole team. So the idea of PetroCup is to create simulator which will require the presence of 10 different uh, disciplines in one room, working together for one or few days to achieve the integrated result, economic result of the uh, production development. And uh, in order to achieve that goal, I created two different teams, one team, are software developers, mathematicians, which were developing the simulators of the production logging, of the well testing, of the drilling, of the walkovers, of the surface facilities, of the economics, of the contractual logistic. So they try to mimic the behavior of their real life asset in many disciplines in the software. And, and the second team was the team of the industry professionals, uh, the, same, the same team we expect for the asset teams to, to perform, the geologist, petrophysicist, uh, simulation engineer, production technologist, the same team, but the team who, who could create the synthetic assets, and not one, but many, uh, with different challenges. And the synthetic assets, which are carefully balanced, carefully balanced in all disciplines. So every discipline has issues 
in these assets and gives opportunity for every discipline to show his capability and then bring his findings to the team. So as you can see, this is a result of an extensive work of two different teams. One was trying to build a, a mathematical engine which re, uh, reproduces the behavior of the assets, even physical behavior, economical behavior, social behavior of the asset in the most realistic way. So the people, when they start doing this, they get immersed in the, in the very similar environment they work in the real petroleum company. And on the other hand, the other team was trying to, to create a library of the different assets with different challenges. So you can actually uh, get trained through the various uh, types of complications and uh, uh, geological and economical realizations. That's the, probably the fastest and the shortest introduction to PetroCAP uh, specifically and to the immersive learning in general. So let me proceed. As you can see from here, I hope you can see my, uh, my mouse. We put a logo, a, a motto for our own self. We train robots and robots train people. We believe that the narrative part of the training, like conventional lectures, should be progressed into the uh, web video uh, environment. So uh, there are a lot of dis disputes on this. I believe that uh, the best lectures I had in my life, they've been videotaped, and now people can get access to the best I can do as a, as a lecturer. And uh, whenever uh, I have a chance to discuss something with people in life, I prefer to do after they watch my video. That, that's my kind of a motto. And basically, if you go and visit uh, NAFTA College uh, website and then proceed into the libraries and to the videos, you're going to see a lot of videos where the people, me and my colleagues, explain uh, things. There is a lot of narration available in those videos. But uh, when people start disputing what is more important, the live communication or the video, uh, uh, watching the videos, I see we should not put it as a competition. We should do both, right? But we probably should uh, shift the focus in live meetings from the narration to the discussion. So the live communication is more of a discussion. And my belief that future of the education, whether it's school education, high school education, university grade education, professional upgrade trainings, they all will migrate in few decades from now into the system where, in the procedure, where there is a narrative part of, uh, uh, of, of the topic, of the subject. And that can be done by watching this video uh, uh, like a YouTube video at whatever time is available and was suitable for you your own self. And then definitely we have to arrange the live sessions with the same lecturers or the same professors so we can uh, actually go through the Q&A session, disputes, discussions, but we will gonna put more focus into the discussions and the disputes, uh, fair disputes, rather than spending time to do the narrative part again and again, over and over. This is my philosopher, philosophy, and that's how I built NAFTA College. We, we don't do any live narrative training. We leave it to the other lecturers across the world. Uh, but we do supply with the uh, engineering facilities, software facilities, the methodologies, so that uh, uh, lecturers uh, uh, across the world, uh, uh, whether they lecture in petroleum company or in the academic, uh, they, they can use our facility and are uh, watching the videos, uh, going through the immersive training. And obviously, they can run the discussions uh, themselves or they can invite us for the discussions. This kind of the strategy we pursue, um, that's what we mean when we say that we train robots and robots train people. A little bit ambitious because there, there are a lot of the people there is a lot of requirement for people to train people, yeah? But we probably limit ourselves to these uh, specific uh, uh, objectives of ourselves and let other professors and lecturers across the world to do the, 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 the live part. I think we've done enough to the strategic introduction and let's go and see 
What is exactly about the petrol car? Who probably is going to need the petrol car training? Uh, not who, I mean, for, for what purposes we, we need the petrol car training? Definitely for the asset management and not for the uh, managers themselves, but also for the disciplines who represent the asset team. And that uh, I'm going to talk about this later and definitely cross discipline training. Basically, what we see from the petrol cup sessions across the world, and there are thousands, we see that the people train themselves much more efficiently than we are. Because we are a very limited in time and we are not friends or old pals for the people in different uh, oil companies, but uh, they are friends together, the geologists and petrophysicists, the petrophysicists and log analysts, the log analysts and simulation engineer. They probably drink coffee every day on the same floor. They probably discuss things together on the real asset, but the intensity of discussion is really small. It's really limited by the corporate, corporate workflow. So when we place them together in the same room, they start knowing each other after one day only. They start knowing each other much better than in the last five years of working together shoulder by shoulder. That's a real cross-discipline training. And they explain to each other the things which they never knew they know. Then obviously, uh, we, we, we need petrol cup training for the young specialists, where they, they, after they graduating the academias, they get a good catch on the theoretical foundation of the, of the petroleum engineering. But uh, in order to get practical skills, they have to join the petroleum company and work in petroleum company for, for many years, like 10 years before they will be graded as an experienced specialist. And they will be entrusted to spend millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars on drilling, on walkovers, on surface infrastructure building, because nobody is going to entrust this decision making to a person who is two, three years old. You have to go through the practical training. And how many actions in the practical training they got every year? It's a very slow process. In PetroCup world, you can go the 10 years uh, experience in just a few days. Then obviously certification and testing. Uh, every training facility, every experienced uh, lecturer, professor, he knows that the, the one of the challenges of any education is the automation because it's really hard work for a real person to go through the all tests and exams. And second uh, challenge is the biasness. It is very important that the people are evaluated without a bias. So robotized evaluation is like a dream for any educational environment. So those immersive learning things, if they run in the testing mode, they provide this automation and automate unbiased evaluation. And next one is going to be corporate championship. We run a lot of corporate championships, both in petroleum, petroleum uh, companies and the petroleum institutes. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this uh, facility uh, as a corporate championship, cross-corporate competition, testing, certification, uh, it becomes very popular today, right? And the access to the sessions is fully automated. Uh, uh, if you visit uh, petrocup.com, so you're gonna go to the session calendar and you can buy the sessions uh, uh, automatically. You can, just like uh, booking.com, you uh, buy the voucher, you can do it online, you can uh, book the session, uh, you can actually move the date of the session if you are not ready to do it this day. And it's all fully automated. We don't really track who and how exactly it's going on. But obviously, uh, if you don't want to do the financials yourself, we have managers which we can help you doing this. But again, our managers who are facilitating the financial things, they still do the booking through the, through the website. It's a fully automated uh, facility. Let's go next. What is the target audience of this training? Uh, it's probably important, one of the most important part of that uh, presentation. We normally talk about 10 people. First is the asset manager. That's the guy. He's the captain of the team. Probably his major uh, 
designation is to gather the team properly and to reach them talking to each other. He has to be a good psychometric guy because the asset manager is not the guy who betters everyone and his team in, in, in disciplines, not at all. He may not be, he, he may come from one of the disciplines, but he may not, he may come from the financials. But that guy is really good in order to put up the team to talk to each other, to listen to each other, because different teams have different people have different charisma. And we've seen this in Petrocap. If the most charismatic person, the most vocal person in the team is a geologist, you can be sure that the whole team will go for the exploration and finding the, the resource. But if you remember a few minutes ago, I told you that the NAFTA team, when it creates the synthetic assets, it creates the synthetic assets in such a way that every discipline is having its share of the contribution. So you, the, the assets which we build have issues in all 10 different disciplines. So if you only focus on one discipline, like geologists, you can only open the 10% of the potential of that asset. If you want to crack the whole potential, you have to bring all 10 disciplines on board and you have to make every discipline specialist to be vocal, to, to find the problems in his disciplines for the specific field, to deliver that message to the team, make the team listen to him and accounted for in analysis and planning. And that will be the main excitement of the capital. The next important is the economics and procurement. The economics is, is rather complex, just like in real life. We take the numbers from real petroleum companies from different petroleum environments. Obviously, they are quite different. There is an economic environment of running the business in deserts. There is a different economic environment of running the business offshore. There is an absolutely different economical environment for running the the, uh, the, the Western Siberia is an Arctic. So we have different economical environments, different assets, and the economist uh, is on the full-time duty within the team, grading the reinvestment opportunities on each and every synthetic year to, uh, to make the maximum profit. Because the automated grading system put the net profit value net present value with, uh, with, with account of the discounting of the money in future as the key of the success. It's a key metric of success. So economist is very important. We've seen many teams which were performing really well in technical terms, but their uh, investment strategy was completely wrong. And they came up with the less profit than the others. And the procurement engineer, the, 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 uh, the PetroCup world contains the contractual logistics. And uh, if, you, if you don't do the decent work in contracting, if you just go for the biggest contractor who provides all the services, that will be probably your weak spot. Because if you watch the opportunities on the market, which are available in the synthetic world of the PetroCup, you're gonna see some very interesting uh, facilities, the contracting normally takes one year. So with one year delay, you can manage the contractuals in a better and efficient way, get a scope discount, but it, but it will depend on how good is the, is the technical team in their predictions on the production. So if they exaggerate the production predictions, then the contracting will be improper, the, the, the one which has been selected. But if the uh, predictions of the technical team, of the engineering team was right, was accurate, and the procurement and economic engineer was quite competent, he gonna fit the best construction facility for, for, for that uh, field development plan. Next guy is a facility engineer, the one who's taking care of the surface infrastructure, production gathering stations, the booster pumps, the, 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 the water supply system. He is looking for the for the, uh, uh, for the manifolds, for the pressure maintenance. He's the guy who has to reduce the bottleneck from the production facility, but not overdo it. Because he, if he overdoes it, then a lot of money will be spent on the surface facility without a use, because the capacity in pressure and the flow rate is, has been exaggerated. And that money can be better used for the drill uh, and the subsurface development. So the next 
important per person is the uh, uh, well and reservoir engineer, <clears throat> normally subsurface engineer, we call it. He will be responsible for the building the plant, for the drillings, walkovers, what types of the quarters, uh, walkovers, production targets. He, he basically creates the field development plan in, in, in terms of the list and then hands over this list to economists and procurement so they can grade it financially and then as a team will accept the plan and then you will proceed into the next synthetic year. The next important person is the production technologist. His major care is the production optimization. He's taking care of the production rates, injection rates, and that it's a lot of work. The majority of the failures, which we see in the teams, is the absence uh, or insufficient capability of the production technologist who doesn't keep the proper production rates. You, 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 I don't want to go into the technicalities today, but you cannot produce uh, 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 at the zero bottom hole pressure because you will incur a lot of the uh, technical issues there, cement cracks, behind casing generates, all the geomechanics, and the well integrity issues are fully reproduced in the Petrocup world. So you have to take care about what is the optimal uh, production rate targets for the producers and injectors, not to avoid the hydrofrax, uh, unwanted hydrofrax, and things like that. Plus, if the current construction of the uh, well is not, is not good to keeping the new uh, production targets from reservoir engineers and production, Technologists can actually advise for the changing completions to install a new pump uh, uh, or on the surface or the downhole. A simulation engineer is another important guy. He is responsible for the current reserves and pressure distribution. He's the guy who, who is responsible to tell the team where are the current reserves, both in vertical profile and area. He has a 3D guy and pressure. He may not be capable within one or two days to build a 3D model like he's doing in real life. But to be honest with you, the Petrocup is not about the training a simulation engineer in the key words of the 3D simulation software. Not at all. What we are trying to train in simulation engineer is his ability to integrate the data into his hand. If he's capable to do it, then the key words of the 3D software and everything will become just a technicality. So in Petrocap, the main idea and the main training target for the simulation engineer to understand the 3D distribution of the current reserves and pressure. And in order to do that, he has to get a very good picture of the initial distribution of the current reserves, which is responsibility of the geologist and petrophysicist. So those are two guys. The first of all, the geologist should be responsible for initial reserve distribution. There are many hidden reserves in Petrocalp world, and it depends on the quality and the capability of geologists to find those opportunities, to explore them. And uh, some th those opportunities, they come clear from the reading the initial data materials from the data room. Some of them are not even in data room, but there are some indications and there are uh, some tricks which geologists use to, 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 to do the exploration. And it really depends on the team work, if the team will listen to geologists and follow his advices. As for petrophysicist, he is, a, he is an important part of the ge uh, geological work because the, the, the initial reserves which, create, which created by geologists, they depend on the lithophysical analysis and the property uh, 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 qualification from the petrophysicist. But also petrophysicist plays an important role during the new drillings. He constantly watch the, the open holes and new drillings. In Petrocup world, you receive the open hole locks. They look exactly like real open hole locks, the full set. And you have to interpret these open hole locks. Uh, obviously, and, and, and you don't have a software because one or two days, uh, you basically don't have access to the commercial software. So you have to interpret it yes, with, with your own eye. And uh, we, we, you can download the last files, to be honest with you. And uh, sometimes we run the sessions for weeks in petroleum companies for the whole week. In this case, you can actually uh, download the last file as if it came from the field with all open hole locks, resistivity, gun locks, uh, just basic uh, open hole lock package. Then you can upload it into your software if you have an access to it. 
and then run interpretation and then even uh, upload it back to the, uh, to the engines. But uh, in the majority of the practical uh, sessions where we are running one or two days, you don't have time for that. But you still can pick up the units and advice on the perforation, what's the saturation, is it water, is it oil, is it gas? So he's in, doing important work, this petrophysicist guy. As you can see, it's, it's uh, one of the most important people, uh, or at least equally important people on board through the whole session. And uh, uh, then we have a well test engineer. The well test engineer is responsible for the pressure rate design, the uh, well test design, build up surveillance, and he has to, 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 to interpret these logs. Again, he's getting the, he's getting the, uh, uh, the raw data, and he has to interpret it in the log log plots. Uh, uh, we, we, we provide the facility, uh, software facility to interpret it along with our software, uh, PetroCap software. But many people don't know it. So basically, you have to give a high level interpretation of the well test data. And honestly, we, we have a lot of, uh, uh, sorry, we go for the well and lock analyst. The last guy, but uh, <laughs> probably one of the most important guy is well and lock analyst. What he's doing, he's constantly uh, interpreting the production logs. He select, he helps to select the candidates for the production logs to understand the flow profiles in multi-layer environment, the majority. So, and well and lock analysts, uh, he's responsible for the flow profile in producers, flow uh, injection profile in injectors. He has to identify the candidates which he believes are not behaving well and needs to get a production logging. There are various production logging uh, tools available in the PetroCup world. And again, he got the raw data. What we have, by the way, is some simplified versions of PetroCup. For example, uh, for students or for the teams who don't have the professional petrophysicists, well test engineers, well log analysts available. In this case, we can uh, uh, run PetroCup in the mood when the interpretation of the open hole logs, well tests, and PLTs. Uh, are already done automatically and the data sent back to you uh, already processed. So the, uh, what you really need is just to integrate this data into the understanding of the rest of it. So we have some, uh, plus we have some simplifications of the assets, simpler assets for the students, for the, for the beginners. So that was a very important page in this presentation. So what kind of the skills we train? Uh, I probably am going to skip that kind of uh, going through all of this because I, I've already I've already spoken of them in, in the previous slide. Definitely you, you, your skills and exploration because as I told you, you, you don't have enough. Uh, or there are some hidden reservoirs, hidden reserves uh, in this. Uh, there are a lot of mistakes from the in the data uh, description, the data, the, the, the data, uh, the field summary you will be reading in the beginning of the, of the session. There are a lot of the mistakes in this data reading, so just like in real life. So we have to be capable to, 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 to take it with, the, uh, with, with some doubts and, and, and go to the raw data and verify, do you agree with the opinion of the previous team to how these things have been interpreted and analyzed? So reading the field summary is useful, but it's not like you're reading the true, the true story. You have to, to, to understand that uh, the, in, in PetroCup world, the story is that you normally start with the, uh, with the production decline and you have to understand why is it declining. Anyway, let's go to the engineering domains. The, the, the most popular engineering domain of PetroCup is the well and reservoir management. It means that exploration has been done, the master development plan has been developed, the field is in decline, it declines faster than it's supposed to be as per the master development plan, let's say after 15 years of development, and you are a team which is challenged to read the previous data available, to go through the old raw data, understand what happened and start developing for, uh, by, uh, for, the, for, the, for the next five years or for the next seven years or for the next 10 years, normally between five and 10, but the, uh, the majority of the training is done over the five years and the majority of the championships are running through the seven synthetic years. 
Five years we do with the one uh, calendar day, uh, which is a little bit tough and many people complain, not enough time. Uh, it's like a stress because every two hours you, you have to, to shoot with the drilling walkovers and the surveillance. And uh, seven, seven shots, normally two days, and two days is, is really good. Many companies, petroleum companies, run Petrocap over three days. As for the MDP, Master Development Plan, it starts from the exploration. The exploration is ready. Uh, the, day, the, book, the, the reserves have been booked, but uh, you have to, do, to run uh, four to five years the trial production, trial water flood, in order to understand the reservoir before you will put the master development plan with the building facilities, how big are the facilities you have to build, what type of the facilities you have to build, how many wells to drill, how, what are the completions of these wells. And as I tell you, whatever I just said, it, there is a very simple and friendly software where you can input this data. The, the, learning the interface of the PetroCup is a five minutes job. These videos are available on the website. And the next uh, domain is the exploration. Uh, this is the least developed domain in uh, PetroCup world today. And uh, I think uh, it's still not commercial. We, we do the trials. So those who will be interested in uh, trying this out, uh, we will be happy to share our first steps in this. But that means that you have just the basin analysis and nothing more. We start with the basin analysis and then you are challenged to explore uh, the field and then upload the results uh, in the form of the 3D model back into the system. So the system will compare it against their real distribution reserves and will grade your performance. Uh, I will be more than happy if we will manage to start uh, this service commercially uh, uh, next year. Well, anyway, our major focus is WRM and MDP. Let's go the session formats. We have two distinct, distinctly different session formats. One is called practical, and the other one is called tournament. The, the practical, basically, the practical is you are given the access to the uh, to the uh, Petrocom portal for the whole day, 24 hours. You can do whatever you want. You can uh, do the uh, shots, uh, uh, the productions, we call them shots, yeah? It's the annual package of the drilling, walkovers, and uh, surveillance. You can de do it whatever time you want because you have a button which is called proceed. You can press that button and proceed to the next synthetic year and see the results of, uh, of your previous year's doing. And every time you proceed into the next year, if you are not happy with the results, then you can roll back to the previous year and repeat it again. And you can do it as many times as you want. Plus, every, every time you proceed into the next year, the whole debriefing uh, data is coming along so you can see the performance using those metrics, comparison with the real, uh, uh, no, let me put it a different way. The actual performance uh, of the, met of the of your activities. Uh, probably at that point, it will not be clear what I mean, but let me proceed into the tournament and then to the debriefing and it will come uh, clear what I mean that in practical, the debriefing is coming every, every year. If I go to the tournament, then I have a very different environment. First of all, you don't have a button proceed. The proceeding will be initiated by the timer. So you have a timer so that at 10 o'clock, there will, there, there will be the end of the synthetic year one. So at 12 o'clock, there will be the end of the synthetic year two. At two o'clock, there will be the end of the synthetic year three. So basically within one working day, you're gonna go through the whole tournament and you cannot uh, roll back. So you, it's a competition uh, and it's a time constraint competition, right? Plus there will be no debriefing metrics send along every time. So once you finish the tournament, then the debriefing metrics, the, de the debriefing uh, data sheet will come on screen. And through this debriefing, you will, be, you will, you will understand that uh, your drillings were not efficient, that your uh, walkovers were not efficient, or pressure support were not or efficient. So you will see a lot of the useful things after the session is over. But in practical mode, 
you get the debriefing all the way along. So it's really like uh, use and abuse the portal in your own way to, to, to develop your own skills. <clears throat> That's why we call it practical. And the tournament is really good for multidisciplinary team, for competition, for the testing, certification, evaluation, for the team building. Uh, that's how the tournament table looks like. You see the synthetic years, and you can see the teams. This is a real uh, organization. This is the name of the team or nickname, which they normally select by for themselves. And there you can see how they were progressing over the over the over the synthetic years. Normally, this one it's a five short, so probably one was one day session, and some was was going up or some was going down. Uh, you can see it from there. The next one is, that's a typical tournament schedule. You see uh, 9.30 start, 11.30, it's booking a day. You can check the progress on the website. Now let's talk about the shot. What does shot include? First of all, you can drill wells. The second, you can do walkovers. Then you can set up the production targets. We have simplified versions of the Petro Cup. You can set production targets by rates. I would like to produce that amount of freight from that well, and I would like to inject that amount of freight in that well. And obviously, we have a 3D simulator back in the reservoir. And if the rate you are requesting from the well cannot be done because the bottom wall pressure goes below minimum, it will be automatically cut off. Uh, but it's a simplified version. In the, uh, in the full-fledged version of Petrocar, you cannot assign the rates just as, is, as it is. You have to manipulate the pump. You have to install the pump, you have to set the frequency by the pump or the power, power of the amp or, or for the water injection, you have to set up the chalk or you have to sort, uh, and you have to set up the booster pumps. So you manipulate with the well through the technical, uh, in technical means rather than just in, in flow rates. <clears throat> for the surveillance, uh, you have different types of surveillance. You have uh, well tests, uh, you have the wireline formation testing, build up surveillance, cross wall interference test, you have production logs, you have uh, noise logs, temperature logs, you have all of this, and all of this will be generated automatically. Uh, and every facility you do here costs you money in, inside the Petrocup world. And you can build the surface infrastructure like uh, the uh, uh, gathering system, the uh, 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 the, the the refinery, the uh, booster pump for the water uh, production, the chokes, the manifolds. You can build up a quite sophisticated system, and it's going to cost you money, and it will be delayed in building. Because whatever changes you want to do in the surface infrastructure, it's going to take you at least one year for the contracting and at least one year of building. And if you want to rebuild the refinery, it's going to cost you three years. So debriefing. Uh, you know, when, I, uh, when we built the software first time and we run the first sessions, that was back in 2015, I guess, five years ago. Uh, my own team of NAFTA specialists, they get in one room and they ask me, okay, we see what we come up with. We see some uh, uh, cash, uh, ben, uh, cash profit we generated. And they asked me, Dr. Atar, is it good or bad? How can we see? Well, obviously, uh, uh, and at that time I told them, I'm a professional <laughs> Uh, field development engineer. I spent my life in uh, developing uh, field uh, development plans for the professional petroleum companies. Of course, I'm going to help you to understand that. It's my job. And you know what? It took me one week to go through every step they did during that day and to understand if, if this activity was good or not, and not alone. Because in order to answer those questions, I was asking the same team to do some exercises in 3D modeling in order, and, and some economic calculations in order to come to my own understanding. Was this action good or bad? So after I, I went through this exercise for one week, I realized that explaining the team, their performance, 
is the project on its own. There need to be another software who can do this. And then I started that project, which we called a debriefer. It's a piece of software which automatically analyzes each and every action of that team. And I, we developed a methodology. What are the metrics in economics? What are the metrics in the production, in the production facility? Uh, and what are the metrics of the efficiency of the injection facility? And we created a new software, which we call a debriefer, which doing this automatically. It's basically watching every team go on a continuous basis and constantly running the calculations uh, in the background. In case of the practical mode, it sends the results immediately after each shot. So a guy who is going through the practicum, he can understand his performance immediately and then roll back to the previous year and improve himself. But in the tournament, the debriefing is only doing it secretly, is not showing anything to, to the teams. But once the tournament is over, the debriefing is sending the data to every team so everybody can understand what went wrong or right for the whole tournament. And explaining debriefing, it's a lot. You can see it's maps, it's cross sections, it's, uh, it's tables. It's quite uh, a big thing. And definitely, if you are interested in PetroCup facility, we will give you a lot of, the, there are a lot of videos which explaining the debriefing, showing the case studies of the debriefings. So you can see them a lot, but also we can uh, definitely meet together in life and uh, discuss it more. Uh, obviously, as I told before, this is a testing facility, and we create the certificates. We issue automatically issue the the robot so automatically issues the uh, certificates. Now, the tools, the software. If you are interested now or later, you can watch first of all videos on how the software works. I mean, the shortest video or showing the interface probably is five minutes. It's available on the website. Plus, we can do the live shots uh, straight away, even after this presentation. Uh, it's all on the web. It's all the website. The asset resources. We have different types of the assets, saturated, undersaturated gas. We have bottom water and edge water, high and low permeability, high low viscosity, onshore, offshore. Offshore is quite di difficult, by the way, in economics. We're still struggling because economics of offshore is very different. Uh, we have a, a team. Uh, from different countries, uh, uh, NAFTA teams. The, uh, uh, the mathematics and the engine are coming all from Russia, but the uh, NAFTA team, which creates the synthetic assets and run moderate, and moderate the sessions and help the others. We have people from uh, North America, from uh, Europe, from North Sea, uh, from India, from uh, Southeast Asia, from uh, North Africa, from uh, uh, here in Dubai, in Oman, and uh, we are trying to bring people now from uh, Central and South Africa and Australia. Uh, I think uh, this year and next year we probably will be covering the whole. Now let me show you the, the typical uh, package for the university. So how can university probably use the PetroCup facility? Apart from running the practicums or running the championship within the university or between the universities, it depends on the size of the university. Some, some, some petroleum faculties, they are uh, uh, having, I don't know, probably 10 graduates every year. So they have only one team. But some universities, let's, uh, let's say in Russia, they graduate 50, uh, 50 uh, petroleum engineers uh, every year. Uh, or 100 engineers, and that means 10 different teams. They run competition within inside university itself, right? But apart from that, let's see how can this become a part of the curriculum. Uh, as I, I believe that PetroCup is the final stage of education of petroleum engineers, whether you're a geologist, petrophysicist, a, a well test engineer, at the end, you all have to work, go to the petroleum company and work as an asset team. So uh, the uh, final stage of any uh, petroleum curriculum should be the interactive exercise with Petroca. <clears throat> we do provide some uh, video, uh, and this video showing the people who actually went through the Petroca once. 
and they and they and, and you can see from this video how the people were interacting to each other. That's a very informative video. But once you watch that video, we, you can start the interactive session. No, it normally consists of the eight days uh, stretched over the two weeks. So the day number one is the guided tournament. So there is a lecture, uh, let's say from the from your organization, who's gonna be uh, he's gonna let people uh, students go through the session themselves, but he will be interfering in what they are doing. The the, this, the 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 students they're supposed to watch the videos from before. They they already know the software. They know. The, the buttons, they know the, uh, the software is very simplistic, as I told you. Uh, it, it's not uh, like the complicated software. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very simplistic software. You drill, you walk over, uh, you, you call for the surveillance, uh, you set the production targets. Uh, 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 but understanding of how you should work together is quite complex, uh, especially if you are young, if you are students. In this case, you have to watch the video, and after this video, you are ready to communicate with the with the physical person from from uh, from a, with the lecture, and then lecture he gives people opportunity a, t a team to go through this exercise. But he's interfering. He's interfering in how do they go through the field review. He's interfering in how do they put up the strategy for the next five years. He's interfering on how to select their uh, actions for the uh, year number one, for year number two. He will be actually interfering, into, uh, but letting the students go themselves. And on day number three, he will do the debriefing, following our procedures or advancing. So I recommend everyone to start with the, our own developments. But if you want to advance it with your own uh, metrics, go, go ahead. Then day number four, day number five, students go on their own a practical. This is a practical session. So the professor can have a rest. During this type, they will use and abuse PetroCAP portal at their own discretion. The same team, all right? So they will be learning from the previous three days and they will try to do the best to understand how, how it's supposed to be. Probably rewatch the videos again. And then uh, after the weekend, we start with the day, day six, uh, you go for the tournament, a trial tournament. We call it the mock-up. Uh, 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 we assume that the lecture is not interfering into what the team is doing during one day. But once it's over, he doing, he, he, he's making the briefing for that. He debriefs them and explains again what went right. And that will be a different asset. That asset will be not be the same as in the previous day number eight. is actually a testing phase. It's, it's an exam. Uh, the team goes through this uh, examination and they got uh, a, a graduation, a certificate. That's how we see uh, uh, the uh, interactive and you know, watching the videos uh, and simulations can be incorporated in the curriculum. And it, 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 it may become a, a, a part of the graduation, of the overall graduation uh, system of your organization. Uh, today, we see that uh, the universities in Russia, they start using these facilities. And there is a call from the petroleum companies to value uh, uh, those who get a very good attainment in these results when they uh, identify and interview the candidates, uh, the young specialists. We've done with this. And now uh, we are coming to the end of this presentation. This is a very important slide. Look. This is the grading system which we developed over the last five years, uh, the, uh, based on the net present value, economic efficiency of the five years tournament. And uh, if you don't, if you run uh, the field development with the maximum performance possible, which is developed by NAFTA College themselves with the open maps. We call it 100%, but it's almost unachievable in blind mode. So even in practical session uh, with a, a bit opportunity to roll back and the debriefing, it's almost impossible to reach 100% with, 
which is the ideal field development plan. It's a, the description of that plan is available. We call it triple A, activity by activity analysis of the reference scenario. But still, even repeating that within one day is, is very difficult. And obviously, if you are blind, if you if you are dealing with that field first time in your life, it's almost it's, it's it's simply possible. But if you don't do anything, and if you just keep the money which you are given in the beginning in the bank and do don't do any activity, then the production of the oil continues, and that will give you five times less profit than the reference plan. So as you can see, the dynamic range between doing nothing and doing maximum available is to 80% between 20 and 100. Plus, there is a scenario which we call boost. The boost scenario is the most barbarian way to develop the field. You don't need the team of 10 people. You need one guy who's going to do a very simplistic, uh, who's going to pursue a very simplistic strategy. He's going to drill only producers, never injectors, only in the crystal area. Once the budget is over, the rest of the money he works uh, spends on the walkovers, only high water cut wells, and he keeps the production, the bottom hole pressure at minimum, and the, uh, for producers and the bottom hole pressure for injectors at maximum. So if you do the booster, then you got get 25%, only 5% increase. Honestly, there are some reservoirs in uh, which I met in my life, even here in the Middle East where the booster can do a much better job than RFI. But definitely in after college, we developed the fields in such a way that first of all, the, the reference is five times better than NFA. Uh, so you better have better be a good team to, to perform. And the booster gives you only 5% advantage. So that's why whatever less than 25%, we call it a failure. Because you don't need a 10 people team to, to reach 25%. Right, and uh, whoever performs more than seventy-five percent, we call it a star, outstanding. We uh, in the last five years we have just few occasions when the team fully blind has managed to achieve seventy-five percent and even eighty percent performance. This is really extraordinary. This is very rare. See, and uh, and this is the percentage of people in the whole market. The excellent results are very rare as well. We call them grade A, 65 to 75%. Again, very rare. Even good results, 55 to 6 The majority of the petroleum companies, professional petroleum companies, with the, the top teams of the petroleum companies, they normally perform in this area. That's, that's their, their slot, 55 to 65%. And out of the 10 teams, let's say one team will hardly reach that uh, point. The lion's share of the whole petroleum industry is within this one, between 25% and 55%. Uh, it's a big chunk of, of teams uh, working in 45, 55% uh, area. We, still, we call it fair. It's, it's not bad, it's fair. But uh, the majority of the world is doing uh, really poor, 35 to 45% or, or very poor. If we talk about the students, uh, even those who already played Petro Cup once, but if they go blind for the new field, uh, uh, and not simplified version, but the, the fully fledged version, they're gonna, uh, the majority of them are gonna fail. And uh, uh, if, if we even talk about the professors who train uh, in universities, they normally end up right around here. The median, the median average is 40 percent of the world, and we are tracking this across the world on an annual basis. Because, as I told you, uh, we don't know the names of the organizations who buy the vouchers and play Petro Cup. We don't know that; it's all anonymous. But the results of all uh, exercises are, are concentrated in the in the in the central database of Petro Cup portal. And, we, and the robot automatically generates the histogram and we know the, the average performance and how is it evolving. Now, let me show you a trick. Let's consider a, a, a petroleum company. The top teams of the petroleum company normally perform at 60%. If this is really high-class petroleum company, even high-class petroleum companies, there will be teams performing at around 30%. 
and that will be quite a lot. See, they will be forming here around 30% and some around 60% right here. The average performance, not median average, but the median average is even below, but the uh, arithmetic average is around 40%. What if we manage to train the all the teams in this organization to perform as their own best teams in this case all will be 60 percent and the arithmetic average economical average efficiency will be 60 percent which means that net profit value of this organization is going to increase from 40 percent to 60 percent in cash which is 50 percent increase in net present value with the same capex with the same opex same fields is just the improving of the holistic training of that organization. Let the other teams perform at the same uh, uh, level at, as the best. And in my experience, I've been asking the top managers of the petroleum companies, uh, biggest petroleum companies in the world, and the ministry representatives in different countries. And I was asking them, what do you think is the difference in economical performance between the best team and the worst team? And you know what the answer was? The majority of them were telling me that we are the high-grade petroleum company. We have a high-class training courses. We select the best of the best. We are almost the same in everything. The performance, economical performance between will be 5% max. And I used to say, let's try well, why not? Let's Robert decide. Let's put your people in the same environment and see how they perform. And we end up with this. And when the top managers of the petroleum companies saw that, that changed that completely. They suddenly realized they really want to level this up because uh, today the petroleum companies are fighting for the NPV increase by 5%, by 10% from the additional capex. They want to increase NPV by, by, by the additional funding from outside. And now I'm coming to them and telling them that you can increase NPV by 50% without any borrowing, just by reducing the number of mistakes and the field development planning on a daily basis, just by improving your, uh, uh, the competence and capability of your people. That comes as a shock. Now, uh, now I was talking about the 60%. Let me show you something else. This is a Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is available on the website on different assets, synthetic assets. This one is specifically Alpha 4. The Alpha 4 was launched in uh, 2018, I believe. What's the, uh, as you can see, uh, the best teams perform 84% and 78%, even higher than 60%. This is a, uh, Tatneft, one of the big uh, Russian companies. And uh, by the way, this is a very interesting story. The Almatic State Oil Institute. This is a specialized petroleum institute. They were performing at 53%. Uh, and they get in the uh, uh, Hall of Fame. But the first time they tried, they were really poor. And, and they came back to me and they told us that uh, now we realize that we train students, but we we really need uh, an our master's uh, uh, program and uh, uh, the team which we collected from masters uh, didn't perform really well. They went below 25%. How to reach the same numbers as the petroleum companies? And I told you, go, to, go through the training, put them, put masters under the training program, uh, PetroCup training program. And uh, uh, they told that it's expensive. Uh, and I said, well, uh, it's a business. They found uh, the sponsorship from, from actually this company. And now you see they, they, the majority of their graduates go to this company. And this is the best performance of the, uh, of the type, yeah, not the worst one. And, 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 they, and they reached 53% in just two years. So in 2019, they came to me and they actually thanked me a lot for, uh, for, for upgrading their own performance and their curriculum. And that's how it all started. And then it went to the Kazan State University and started spread, spreading. We have two academic universities in the Hall of Fame, uh, from Almaty City and from Kazan, both Russia. All the other companies are petroleum and petroleum servicing companies. 
including petroleum development of land. Now, is 60% is really max? No, if you, if you can see from, from, uh, from, sorry, from, from Hall of Fame, you can actually perform at uh, 75% and even higher. So what if we upgrade the performance of the World Petroleum Society to 75% from current 40? That will be increased from 40 to, to 75. It's almost doubling of the economic performance of the companies. That will sound crazy. For any chief finance officer of petroleum company, he is going to tell you, I don't believe that we are actually losing that amount of profit just because we, our competence capabilities across the team is not leveled. You see? And I believe the universities across the world, if they will adopt immersive learning, the, the PetroCup type simulations, not necessarily PetroCup, many, many others will come in years. But today, I don't know who is, who, is, who is offering the same facility, which is fully automated, which is fully mirroring. It's a digital mirror of the uh, digital uh, oil field, and the digital oil field is built just like real. And here is the geography of uh, PetroCup uh, sessions, championships, training across the world. Uh, and it's a little bit outdated. We have more pins uh, coming up uh, today. But anyway, uh, we are talking about more than 1,000 participants uh, by, by, by today. You can find two SP papers. Uh, one SP paper is showing how things are arranged. I mean, what's the room, big room, small room, uh, many readings on the logistics of the PetroCup based, uh, uh, to, I think we published it together with Petronas uh, and how it was run in uh, Southeast Asia. And there's another interesting paper, which is called World Summary of PetroCup Performance. It's not about the PetroCup as per se, it's about uh, those things. How the world is performing in many metrics, in water supply, in, in surveillance, what are the weak spots which are typical for the whole world, uh, I don't split by countries, by regions, because I don't want to raise this who's better or worse. But the gross world uh, summary is very useful. And some uh, weak spots of the modern petroleum engineering uh, are zoomed through the synthetic petrocap sessions, and they summarized in this SP paper. Well, thank you very much. I think I'm done and I'm ready for the questions. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Arthur. I personally very enjoyed your presentation. Yes, you're quite right. It is now time to head to Q&A session. Uh, so I can see two questions right now. So now it will be the best time to ask. The first question uh, was uh, from um, Dr. RK. Uh, and he said, uh, how much training is needed to run the software? Will there be any help available during the initial stage during the tournament, like, for example, a chat box? Uh, well, actually, uh, you know, when we see the students, really young people, masters or fresh graduates, they basically just watch our video and they uh, uh, get the idea of how to manipulate the software. So we, we have a lot of videos which explain how to do those things. But definitely uh, for those who still uh, feel uncomfortable and before uh, uh, going into the commercial session, whether it's a tournament or practicum, if they need some support that we, we have a support, we, uh, we can, uh, contact people, we can share the screen, we can help him navigate through the software. But basically, it does require 10 to 15 minutes to learn. Basically, if, you, if you've never been across the PetroCup, it's very similar uh, to buying stuff at Amazon or eBay. You want to buy, you want to drill the well, you just buy this facility. Uh, you can construct the well through the, uh, the constructing the well is quite straightforward. What's the length of the casing? What's the diameter of the casing? What is the um, uh, 
a horizontal completion section or multi-stage fracturing, uh, or uh, if you want to buy the surveillance, what kind of surveillance, PLT, well tests, uh, or, uh, or walkovers. So all of those things are quite normal. Uh, everybody knows that those things exist. And if you go to the interface, to the web interface of PetroCup software, those things are just like buying a stuff in eBay or uh, Amazon. So it's very, very uh, straightforward. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, the next question is, uh, if, for example, a university is interested in PetroCup, who do they need to contact? And are there any different packages between universities and companies? Uh, 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 first of all, our contacts are available on the website. Uh, you can drop the message right here on, after this uh, webinar. And uh, uh, if you visit uh, petrocap.com website, there is a flashing, uh, uh, flashing icon, which is just suggesting to start uh, a chat communication with our representatives, which are available with 24-7. But as for the packages, uh, uh, let me explain. The PetroCup itself, which I just explained, is just, a, is just a tool. It's a facility. This facility can be used in a very different uh, way. And it, it's being used by, in a different way by different organizations. One thing is that uh, the, the big petroleum companies, they run championships between their own teams. They split the whole organization. Let's say 300 people they split into the 30 different teams by 10 people in each team. And they run the, the championship over the year. And at the end of the year, they just see who is the winner, the ultimate winner. They run it in master development planning uh, when you start from the exploration, or you can run it in well and resident management for the mature ground fields. Sometimes the big organizations run championships for both. Then you can do the practicums. Uh, uh, so when you just, uh, they just buy vouchers from us, sometimes anonymously, we have no idea who bought the vouchers and they just uh, use and abuse the portal uh, during the 24 hours or combining uh, the one session, uh, practical session into two days. Uh, again, we have no idea who's doing this, but they, 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 all the results of their activity is, uh, uh, is cataloged in our data uh, center. And uh, obviously universities uh, and, and the training institutions in petroleum companies, uh, the, the, the training, I'll better speak about the training institution, but the petroleum companies, what they do, they have specific training for the uh, senior specialist. And in this case, they run PetroCup in the combat mode it's really combat mode, like in the championships, but it's a training facility, not the, the, the tournament. And for the younger people, for the great juniors, young specialists, obviously we, they use simplified version of PetroCup uh, because running through the combat mode will be difficult for them in the beginning. And the same for the students in universities, we have simplified versions. And for the universities and for the young specialists, we do recommend the eight days training. I just mentioned it in my um, main presentation that we have a specifically developed a, a, a training course, practical course of eight days, which includes watching the videos before we start this eight days, this two weeks uh, training course. And you can come back to these videos during these two weeks. And it includes practical and it includes the guided tools and it includes the certification. So as I told you, we do have a facility and you can use this facility in your own way. Just, just rent the facility and do whatever you want. Or you can actually uh, use one of our developments in terms of their logistics, in terms of their session events. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, what are the main advantages over the similar tools, if there are any? Uh, we've never seen the fully automated facilities. Uh, if they exist, they may exist. We just never come across. We've seen a lot of uh, imitating programs. They've been uh, around for years. They're not simulators. They are imitators. So they do not reproduce the behavior of the reservoir or the wells fully physical. 
They don't actually simulate the flow in the reservoir. They don't simulate the lift in the producers, the pump locations, the, the injection, the lift, uh, injection lift. They don't simulate the flow in the pipelines, uh, in the surface facilities. They don't reproduce the geomechanics, so they don't have spontaneous fractures or hydrofractures, induced hydrofractures. They don't uh, reproduce the cement failures. They don't reproduce the surveillance. Those imitators which we came across, they don't have this all. They don't have these facilities which you just described, and they don't have their physicality and their models. But uh, uh, obviously we consider uh, our automation, fully robotization, uh, and the, uh, the facilities which I just described, the functionalities, is our advantage. Plus, keep in mind, we have a debriefing robot. The debriefing software is one of our greatest achievements, I would say. So once the session is over, it is very important to explain uh, uh, the team what was good or what was bad. We have dozens of metrics, auto-generated metrics, numbers, tables, graphs, uh, maps, and cross-sections. They are very easy to understand. Once you watch the consolidated activity statistics for like half an hour, after that, you can see the robotized uh, debriefing every time by, all by yourself. So all of this makes up our package, I believe, quite unique. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, can you explain, please, uh, how important is Petri Cup to a professional specialist who is already working in the oil and gas company? Very good question, by the way. Uh, in most cases, when I present PetroCup to the professional petroleum company, <coughs> their initial behavior a little bit arrogant. So they say, wow, it's such a good thing for, for universities, for the fresh graduates. Obviously, it's zero uh, value for us as uh, professional reservoir engineers. And I normally say, why don't you just try? Just make up a team and go through it. And they do, and then realize that their ability to understand, uh, to run through the holistic uh, uh, session, to, to perform as a team from uh, different disciplines and communicate, in many cases, is very poor. But what do you mean uh, by poor? I mean, uh, I mean top rank petroleum companies, I'm not going to name them because uh, they, uh, everybody knows that. And when they went through the PetroCup, the professionals went up to 60%. But uh, first of all, it's not like every single team in those companies perform at 50 to 60%. Uh, many of their teams perform at 40%, and some teams perform at 35% in the same top rank petroleum company. And more than that, I was demonstrating to everybody that there are some institutions, younger generation people, some servicing comp petroleum servicing company who are not that arrogant, who took petroleum uh, training as a challenge and went through it for one or two years. And they managed to perform at 75%, 70 to 70, outperforming the best teams at the petroleum, uh, professional petroleum companies, which means that uh, we still have some room for improvement, even for the uh, best specialists. By the way, once the top teams of the petroleum companies complete their, uh, the session, one-day session, two-day session, three-day sessions, they come back to us, to NAFTA College, with a very uh, open and honest confession that we, we just realized that we lacked in this component, we lacked in this component, the, the going through the session itself was very instructive for us. What do we, we don't we do? Uh, and normally it's not the failure in some disciplines. It, uh, it, the failure in the disciplines is mostly uh, uh, common for the young specialists who didn't have a geologist on board, who didn't have a petrophysicist on board, or well test engineer, or simulation engineer. Or engineer or economist on board. In this case, they, they do fail in disciplines. 
but uh, the professional petroleum tea companies, which were preparing for the Petro Cup, and were not playing Petro Cup the first time in their life, they have the full suite of disciplines present uh, and a strong captain leading the team and still performing at 60%, not at 70 or 80%. And uh, after they finish this uh, uh, session, they do realize that the problem was not in the discipline itself. They, they, they managed to, to pick up the complications which we, uh, which we mined in the uh, disciplines when we were building this uh, synthetic case. But what they failed to do is to aggregate that knowledge into the uh, uh, true picture of the reservoir and then grade the investment opportunities on where they have to invest first and where they have to invest next. And, and they learn from this. This gray hair people, 50 60, 50, 60 years old. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this thorough answer. Uh, so uh, another question we have here is, uh, what do you think are the forms of integration of Petrocup into the educational process of universities? It's just a training course, which I described in my, in my presentation. So the best we can offer today, the best we developed and practiced, uh, practiced for, for the last five years is eight days. Uh, but those eight days are spread over the two weeks. So basically a two weeks training course. We believe that uh, once you finish the academic uh, training in all disciplines, then you gather the 10 people uh, teams of students or young specialists in petroleum companies, and then let them go through the eight days training and certification. Plus we advise universities to run the championships. After the training is over, the, the two weeks training is over, let them compete to each other uh, either between, between the teams inside the university, the university is big, or going through the cross universities. Let's say back in Russia, we, we run the Olympics uh, for, for the last four years. So all the Russian universities, they just compete between each other in the all Russian Olympics on Petrograd. Uh, thank you. And uh, can uh, the same approach uh, that is used for Petrograd be applied for the development of the real fields? Absolutely. This is basically a digital uh, twin. The, the software uh, behind PetroCup is a digital twin, and it's been used by uh, some companies, like, for example, Safoil. Safoil company is using that, the same engine, the same software, to, to create digital twin of the real fields and then uh, uh, develop the optimal uh, field development plans or uh, annual uh, production scenarios uh, based on this digital twin. We don't do this at NAFTA. We use this facility for the, for the training purposes, but software is using it for the, for the field development planning. Thank you. Okay, and uh, the last question we have uh, is, uh, is uh, the scalability of PetroCup, is there a limit to how many users at any point of time can use it? And what if many users try to log in at the same time and try to use it? Okay, I'm gonna answer both questions. First of all, we have, it's a web facility. We have no control how many people are behind the voucher. If you buy voucher and you can uh, register, book the session at our website, you can buy voucher fully anonymously using the credit card. And then uh, we have no idea how many people will be behind that uh, session. One person, 10 people, 100 people, we don't care, right? But uh, uh, there is only one login access. So if you have uh, admin account, uh, captain account, only captain can do the, uh, inter many people can watch the data, uh, the, the data room, uh, whatever, 100 people can watch data room. You have the link to the data room, you can read, and the results of the uh, shots, you can see the results coming on screen, as many people as you want. But only one login can actually enter the activities, which is basically, we call it a captain login. 
Thank you. Okay, and I see another question there. Uh, if the universities are having an interest to um, whom do they need to contact? But I think we, you already uh, answered this question. So uh, as we are running a bit late right now, uh, I think we should say that question pool is now ended. And once again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Arthur, for taking your time and speaking today. If for some reason we missed your questions or you have any questions left, we will surely discuss them after the webinar on our forum. The link is provided now in the description in this webinar. So if you enjoy this webinar, please feel free to put the thumbs up to this video and subscribe. We have a lot of other exciting webinars coming soon. So for all of that and more, I'll see you in the next webinar. Goodbye. Thank you very much.